Hey everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood accountant, Eric Stockhausen, and today we're doing part three of Gwent's mid-winter update card reveals, first impressions, Ugh, mouthful, really. Uh, two news items. First news item, uh, we have a leak on Moonlight, the boon card we're being see we've seen in the cards related to werewolves. This leak comes courtesy of Hesser Gaming, link in the description to his video great investigation work has her um, he found it on the chinese twitter version of twitter and did an analysis video for you guys so again link in the description to his video talking about moonlight second news item is i have made a survey that all of you can do asking you about how Gwent should be monetized. It's really quick, takes like three minutes, only 10 questions. I hope you guys enjoy. I already have 500 respondents to the survey and 200 people have given uh, suggestions of what they would like to buy in Gwent in the future. Now, without further ado, let's do some card reveals. Our first card is in the neutral section called Portcullis Tactic Special. Spawn a bronze or silver unit from your opponent's starting deck and boost it by two. This card is, uh, it doesn't matter when you play it in the round because uh, it, it's not affected by deck thinning. It's, starting deck means whatever cards they came into the game with. They could have drawn their entire deck. They could only have one card in their hand and zero in their um, draw pile. This card will still pull from every card they had from the beginning of the game. Uh, the boost by two doesn't justify getting a random card. And if you play against, let's say, 40 card Northern Realms, chances are you're not going to get any silver units. You're just going to get three bronze cards. And a lot of those bronze cards are going to be three strength because uh, 40 card Nilf, uh, I mean, Northern Realms plays stuff that needs to get buffed over the course of the game. I cannot recommend this card. And anything other than a Rafam style milf card where you just play your opponent's cards for the lols. Um, apparently it will be popular in the new game mode they're coming up with that kind of focuses on situational cards. Since you don't know what's in your opponent's deck and they have a lot of really random cards. <laughs> Our next new card is Nivellin. Cursed, move all units to on a row to random rows. So this is basically Sheldon Skaggs but neutral. The curse tag is important for Ada, who can spawn a random, uh, spawn a cursed unit. So sometimes you want to move your units around, and this would be a situational card to do that with. If you're playing Scoyatel, movement Scoyatel with Blue Mountain Commandos, you might put this in with Sheldon Skaggs to get lots of movement. However, that might be overkill. There are a lot of movement cards that you can play, and movement is already pretty good where it is. It doesn't need Nivellin to be viable. Our next card is Trial of the Grasses, Alchemy Special. Deal 10 damage to a unit unless it is a Witcher. If it survives, boost it to 25 power. And is to play it on a um, Witcher card like Lambert or Geralt Gyrden. And that would be a 20 point play if you use Trial of the Grasses on them. Again, pretty strong. Uh, our next card is one I'm really excited for is Siri Nova, Sintra, Witcher, Doomed. If you have exactly two copies of each bronze card in your starting deck, set its power to 25. So the smallest deck you can create with Siri Nova is 26 cards. Why? Because uh, 15, you have 15 bronzes in a standard 25 card deck for bronzes. That's not divisible by two. So you have to have one more so that they're all so you have an e you know two of each. Now the deck I see you playing this in is with um, Saskia Dragonfire in a Francisca Mulligan deck. So you mulligan out all your silvers and your golds, and then you play Saskia Dragonfire, destroy the rest of the bronze cards in your hand, draw the remain remaining cards from your deck. A large portion of them will be golds and silvers with a few of them being bronzes still. Suddenly, you have a high tempo deck full of golds and silvers, and you can renew Siri if they scorch her or if um, you go into another round. It'll be high tempo, it will, um, it will be exciting to play, and I wanna see if it works. 
Now, another thing about it is the bronzes have to be standalone. They can't be synergy cards. If they're synergy cards, then there's a... Um, you kind of mess it up by having getting rid of them and having two of them. You also can't play cards that have to be that are best in a triplet, like Blue Mountain Commando wouldn't make sense in a Siri Nova deck. Moving on to monsters, we have Siren Beast, Summon Moonlight. Um, so if again, Hesser made a video about a leak regarding Moonlight, link in the description. So this is basically um, a Frost Wolf, but for Moonlight. It pulls a Moonlight from your deck and then you get to play it. I believe that's what Summon means. Um, uh, moonlight will affect werewolves like this and Alpha Werewolf and give them boons. So it's pretty cool. Um, not much to say at this point. I actually like um, Moonlight better than having um, frost in uh, Biting Frost decks. I think it's more exciting than having to deal with the attrition damage. Our next new card in card is Ruin, Insectoid Cursed. Strengthen all your Insectoid and Cursed units by one wherever they are. This card's a lot like the Dwarf card that boosts all Dwarfs, I mean strengthens all Dwarfs in your deck and on the board. But this one affects two classes, so that's exciting. I can see this being played in um, swarm decks. So the Arrakis's would get all buffed by one. And then you can play this uh, in a cursed unit deck. And there are a lot of cursed units. So you, you actually do not know what you're up against if this is the first card that your opponent plays. They could technically play both cursed and insectoid with this, but I think they're going to focus on one or the other in the long run. Pretty cool card. Next one is Goliath, Orgoid, uh, boost self by six. Whenever this unit is damaged, deal two damage to self. So um, this is a nightmare if your opponent is playing Ballistas and stuff like that, because it just keeps triggering over and over and over again, the two damage effect. Um, otherwise, if you don't think your opponent has any kind of removal or damaging effects, this card is a 16 strength silver, which is pretty good. Not much else to say about that. There, uh, the Orgoid um, tag isn't being utilized by anything, so that's a downside. Um, can't really combo it with the cursed and insectoid stuff that we're seeing. Final card is Whispering Hillock, uh, for monsters that is. Uh, Relic Leader spawn an organic card. So there are about 15 cards in the organic pool. Two uh, silvers are in the monster faction specifically that's monster nest which is a good card and um, parasite now people are upset about this because they think well shouldn't just a normal gold card have the spawn effect not a leader and some people are upset about the card art i think the card art makes sense i remember doing this quest i remember the horse um <laughs> i get it uh the randomness i'm not exactly sure i'm going to just say this right now because it says spawn on it i cannot evaluate this card uh the randomness makes it so i'm like how much strength does this reasonably represent what are the chances of getting a silver card consistently uh, are the bronze options good or bad um why couldn't it just be like Aridin, but for organic card bronze organic cards it, to me it just seems like it's a potentially better Aridin because you can pull a silver other than that i don't know how strong it's going to be at all <laughs> moving on to Nilfgaard, we have uh the slave hunter soldier spawn uh charm a, you see me, I'm saying spawn all the time now. Charm a bronze enemy with three power or less. So if you get a three power unit with this, it suddenly becomes a 14 strength play. There's a lot of 14 strength bronze cards that are situational in this set. It's kind of like a weaker muzzle in many ways. Um, you can play this with emissaries because you can pull the emissaries onto your side of the board unless the enemy tack only means um, enemy allies. But I don't think that's the case. 
Yeah. There are cards that you will want to steal from your opponent, like Blue Mountain Commandos. And um, uh, there is a Northern Realms unit, um, the Tormented Mage, that you will want you would want to steal so that they don't get the um, synergy with Dam Sorceress. And we'll talk about the synergy with Curse Knight later. So you can uh, abuse um, Slave Hunter to ruin certain combos. Uh, other than that, it's just... It's, um, it's an interesting card, and you would definitely, if you want to play the whole slave synergy thing, you could do that. <laughs> there isn't really much synergy between these two cards, to be fair. Okay, our next card is uh, Vrimda. Vrimda? Uh, Vrimdi? Vrimda. I'm going to go with Vrimda. Vrimda. <laughs> Officer, spawn a bronze Nilfgaardian soldier. So there are a lot of good Nilfgaardian soldiers, and this supports the Nilfgaardian soldier archetype. I like the fact that it's only Nilfgaardian soldiers, because um, that lim limits the card pool significantly. Not much else to say about it. Whenever it says spawn, there's not much to say. Until it happens, it happens. Uh, Yennefer, I know I talked about this in the previous video, but I believe it's going up to 7 base strength, based on some of the leak images from China that you can see in the Hesser video. Uh, Shillard is a cool card. It says, Truce, draw a card from both decks and keep one, give your opponent the other. I like that effect. So imagine you know that you're going to draw a bronze card for whatever reason, and your opponent, you draw a gold card from your opponent's hand. You give them your bronze card, you get to keep their gold card. Chances are the bronze card is useless to them because they lack the synergies to use it. There are a lot of, uh, like, think of Operator. A lot of bronze cards only work in your deck, and that's why we use Operator. The Truce means that if the opponent passes, the effect does not go off. And also note that while there are a lot of mill-related cards being added in this set, other old milled cards are being changed so that this doesn't become out of hand and mill decks just go crazy. Because you have, there's a tight balance you have to do there. Okay. Um, moving on to Northern Realms. Our first new Northern Realms card is Cursed Knight, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Curse, Soldier, Adrian, transform a cursed ally into a copy of itself. Um, give to armor. So if you take this ar unit and you transform it into this, that means it goes up in 6 base strength. You add the 6 to this 8, that's 14. Again, like I said, a lot of 14 strength conditional bronze units being added to this set. Now the 2 armor is also nice. Um, other than that, not much to say. You can also use it on uh, Dam Sorceress for a 12 point swing. Because you get 4 base strength boost by turning it into an 8 base strength card. It's a weaker effect. Chances are you're going to have this card on the board first, and then you're going to play Damn Sorceress or Cursed Knight afterwards to follow it up. Now, playing too many Cursed Knights uh, onto the same row will be bad because they'll all have 8 strength and be Igni food. <laughs> Not out much else to say. Uh, the next really cool card is Vandegrift. I love this card. Um, Curse, Cadwin Officer. Damage all enemies by one. Reminds me of old... Um, Herald the Cripple. If a unit is destroyed, apply Ragnarok to its row. So let's say you're playing Machine Northern Realms and you knock a bunch of units down to one strength. You could play this unit and then get a bunch of Ragnaroks on the row. Now, it's only one row for every unit, uh, one row where the unit died. So you need to have those one strength units on multiple rows to get the full effect. Another way to use this is just to wait until the very end of a long, long, long round. Because imagine your opponent has 20 cards on their board after playing t like playing an extraordinarily long round. Like 10 card round. Then this card's going to be a 27 play point play. That's, that's pretty big. Huge. It's good they didn't give this card to um, Skellige. This would be just broken with the Axeman cards. <laughs> now, I think Vandergrift is going to see a lot of play. Uh, finally, Ada, the other card that people are kind of upset about. Leader, Curse, spawn a bronze or silver cursed unit. Not much, I can't really say anything because the spawn effect is random enough that I, I don't know what the general power this card's going to have on the board. 
Might be good in that new game mode they're coming up with where spawn effects are going to be uh, the meta. Moving on to Skoytel, my um, faction I'm best known for. We have the Elven Scout, Soldier Elf. Spawn a bronze Skoytel unit that is not in your starting deck. Um, I like the fact that it's not in your starting deck because that could lead to some interesting synergies. But I can't think of which ones. <laughs> That's a lot of, there are a lot of different bronze Skoytel units that you wouldn't put in your deck. Like um, Blue Mountain, if you're not running Blue Mountain Commando, you don't want to pick this card for that. But if you are running Blue Mountain Commandos and you have none of them in your hand, you can use Elven Scout to pull, uh, play a Blue Mountain Commando and then pull three Blue Mountain Commandos onto the board. That'd be cool. Then you have a really interesting Sheldon Skaggs turn. Until, until we, like, I don't see think of this card seeing much play outside of the new game mode. Because uh, the spawn effect, you wouldn't build your deck around Elven Scout. I can't think of you doing that. Unless you're playing like very little uh, actual units and you're doing a Strigobor deck. Because Strigobor will turn a unit that you draw into a one uh, one strength. So if you're playing uh, very few units in your deck, like your uh, <laughs> like Scoyotel can do, then Elven Scout is great. Uh, you can also make Elven Scouts and Elven Mercenaries with a bunch of bronze spells. You can make a Strigobor deck with this. And I think that's probably the only place, other place I would see it. Which is fine, because then you would have a lot of options. Okay. Uh, new, uh, the Mahakam Horn, special item. Choose one. Spawn a bronze or silver dwarf or strength in a unit by seven. This card is supposed to be synergized with this one, Poly Dahlberg, support dwarf, resurrect a non-support bronze dwarf. So let's say you buff one of your dwarves by seven and you you played uh you also strengthen your units with other cards then you resurrect it for a huge point swing kind of like what we do with um gremist and uh zigfrida so you resurrect it that way or with restore in gremist yeah so boost effects can be uh, pretty powerful so i see these cards being comboed together a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how much though, um, because how, there isn't terribly too much synergies with revivals. They have, Scoyotel now has like two major revival cards, Hattori and Polly. So I'm definitely going to experiment with this. That's my first impression. Okay. Uh, Xavier Moran, um, Dwarf, boost this unit by the starting power of the last Dwarf you play. You can combo this with the Mahakam or Horn if you um, resurrect um, it with Polly. I'm not sure if play means from your hand, but I'm pretty sure it just means the last one that got went onto the board, because that's kind of how uh, Summoning Circle works. Definitely, if you're playing the Mahakam or I see these three cards being in your deck as a combo. Okay, Skellige's turn. The next new card we have is Clan Protector Soldier Hey May. <laughs> uh, play a bronze item from your deck. Finally, we got an item-based archetype. I am excited to see how this works out. Now, note that Clan Protector is, if Clan Protector is the only unit in your deck, you will not be playing the two bronze items that they have revealed as they uh, are based on the strength of a card in your hand. However, of course, then you already know that you're doing that, so you would be putting uh, large bronze units in your deck so that you can combo it with the Clan Protector. This does also mean deck thinning for you, so that's great. Okay, our next new unit is um, Giant Boar with Moonlight in the background. That's the... Um, um, CD Project Red employee, his face there, cool guy, follows me on Twitter. Uh, destroy a random ally, then boost this self by um, 10. You could use this with uh, Beastmaster and uh, um, Priestess of Freya. Those are options. 
You could even hit a Heim with this. It's The RNG on this is controllable, so if you have a board with a lot of low strength cards on them, uh, Giant Boar will generally be good, but it's at least a 16 point silver. There are a lot of other silvers that are more consistently high tempo than this is. Now, do note that if you destroy a random ally, and it's an ally you don't want to destroy, you can still revive it, so it's not the end of the world. And some cards you want to uh, want to die and resurrect multiple times, so like the skirmishers. So again, there are other ways to use giant boar than simply <laughs> uh, trying to destroy small base strength units. Final card is Olaf Beast Curse. Deal ten damage to self. Reduce this damage inflicted by two for each beast you have played this turn match. It's not terribly hard to get five beast onto the board at some point if you are playing a beast deck so uh, this can easily become a 20 point swing and you can use renew with it which is great uh, i expect that to be a common strategy okay I, I think golds are actually getting buffed massively in this patch these new golds are a lot of them can be manipulated to easily be 20 point plays which makes them scary uh, for what's coming to this game, because <laughs> I don't I don't feel like most golds and um, that we currently have generate this much value consistently. Well, uh, tell me what you guys think.